Hey, in this video, we're going to look at the Lindeberg Central Limit Theorem. And we're going to show an example where the conditions for the Lindeberg Central Limit Theorem are not met or not satisfied, but the variable still converges to a standard normal distribution. And the reason I'm, I'm, I just started out with this one, I don't really know why. I'm going to do two, three, four more videos on the Lindenberg Central Limit Theorem, explaining what it means, what we get from it. We're going to prove the theorem itself, and um, that. And I'll probably kind of mix in some maximum likelihood estimators of the GLM, the Generalized Linear Model, too. I'm kind of waffling back and forth between those two. But for this one, a reminder what the uh, theorem says is that if we have a sum of independent random variables, so they're all independent, they might have their own mean, so the, the mean of xk is mu k, and the variance is sigma k squared. And if we let tn be this quantity here, the sum, you know, the, the difference of, of the sum and the expected value of the sum divided by the standard deviation of the sum, then if this condition here is met, where the integral is over this area here, it's all x such that this absolute value of this difference is greater than this quantity here, then a random variable tn converges to a random variable that has a, a standard normal distribution. And so, and one reason I'm starting out with this uh, video, this example, is I really wanted to, to show and, and what this means. And then we'll, do, we'll have a follow-up video even more detail. But I think this video will kind of help explain that. So in this example, we're going to let xk be a normal with a mean zero and variance uh, sigma k squared, where sigma 1 squared is 1, and then the remaining sigma k squared is 2 raised to the k minus 2, and that's for k greater than or equal to 2. Uh, the xk are independent, and so as in the theorem, let's let x n be, s n be this sum, uh, c n be the variance of this sum, which is 2 raised to the n minus 1. Now let's look at the expected value of the last term, xn over cn, and that's zero, because the, these expected, they're all expected value zero. Now the variance of that last term, you know, the cost that comes out front, and the variance of xn is, is you know, two raised to n minus two, and that cancels to one half. Now if we look at the kth term, so this is the last one, n. Of course, then n goes to infinity, but at, look at one of the values less than n, k, less than or equal to k, n, is it's this. So bring out the constant squared, the variance of xk is 2 raised to the k minus 2. And then, you know, that goes down. You can think of it as 1 over 2 raised to the n minus k plus 1. But one note is that this variance here is always less than or equal to uh, this variance. So the the you know the any one term less than or equal to n, the variance is less than or equal to that last term. That's going to play a part on page three. So here's a note. So the x n over c n is a normal zero uh, variance one half random variable. Okay. And if we want to find this probability, so probability of this random variable is greater, the absolute value of this random variable is greater than epsilon. A picture of that is this. So it's a normal random variable, zero uh, variance, one half, and some number epsilon, and the absolute value greater than epsilon means here, and, and of course less than minus epsilon. Now, if we were to multiply the CN to both sides, it, we could write it like this, but really it, it's this, you know, that's our random variable. And being greater than epsilon is, let's call it A, whatever that is, that the sum of this area here. But the big note is that 
for any n. So if this is the 100th term, it's still a normal 0, 1 half. It's the 1,000th term, it's still a normal 0, 1 half random variable. So this probability is, is A, that's what we called it. It's positive, it's a constant, and it doesn't depend upon n. So now let's specifically look at the uh, Lind Lindeberg criteria. So that's this piece here. And we're integrating over A, where A is, is the all x's such that the absolute value of this difference is greater than or equal to this quantity. So remember, if you think about it, we can divide both sides by Cn. And it's, and it's kind of like a standardized variable greater than epsilon. And um, what this shows, well, let, let's, I'll move on and then we'll come back. So this is the condition. So if we were to square both sides of this, then x minus mu k squared is greater than or equal to um, epsilon squared and, and cn squared. So if we were to put this piece in here instead of this piece, then the interval just got smaller. And so that's what we do. So if we put this in here, then the cn squareds cancel and the epsilon is you know is independent in the free in the x world so it comes out front and we're left with this so now if we're integrating over some region of this uh this here so this this is a, a riemann stilts notation so you can think of this as f of x dx but you write it like this because it also can be a discrete random variable and it's and and you can still integrate it so if, but if it's a continuous random variable, you can think of it as f of x dx. And so if you integrate over an area, f, f of x dx, that's probability. So this piece here is, is the probability. And another note here, note that I went to xk here, but it was x. It's like, whoa, wait, what happened? Well, here, it, it really should be xk, but since we're integrating, it's a dummy variable. And so it can be anything. But really, it's x1, x2, x3, up to xn. But often it's written as just x. Um, but it really means term by term. Okay, So it's this probability. Now, if this probability is, uh, you know, it's a sum... So there's n terms here, and one of those terms is the largest term, and the others are less than that. And, and since it's probability, they're all positive. And so if we find, if we just take the, the biggest term and then get in, and don't sum the other terms, we just went down, right? So let's just take the maximum term of all of these terms, okay? Well, what's interesting, okay, this is a side note. Note that if this converges to zero, it's called uniform asymptotic negligibility, or UAN. And so what this, this says that each of, the K, each of the N terms, if you pick the largest, there's the largest term doesn't dominate this sum. You know, if the largest term goes to zero, then you know, then they all kind of go to zero, and that sum, in you know, ends up, you know, this sum ends up going to zero because it's a probability statement as n goes to infinity. Okay, so so far it's been pretty generic. Okay, and so let's let's now let's bring it back to our specific example, where the the, the mean of each random variable is zero, and so. And then we're going to divide this CN over here. And that's what we get here. So from here to here, nothing's changed. We've just used the example that we've started. Um, and now the maximum of the, from 1 to N of all these terms, we just noted that, that the last term was the biggest. So we'll just put it in, XN. Now, this here is um, 
it, it's some number, the probability. So this is, uh, that's epsilon squared. Oh, and that's a blue ink, but oh well. And um, so this is, this is some positive number. And it doesn't converge to zero. So as n goes to infinity, you know, this is some positive number. So the Lindeberg conditions do not converge to zero. They're, they're greater than or equal to um, some positive number. So th it doesn't converge to zero. But if we look at Tn, which is this quantity here, and this is the sum of independent normal random variables, so it's again normal with whatever mean that is and whatever variance that is. So if we look at the, the mean of these random variables, and each, since each one of those is zero, it's zero. Now if we take the variance of Tn, then it's the variance of this, so the Cn squared comes out, and the variance of Sn, which is what we were calling Cn squared, so those cancel as one. So it does it is a normal you know, standard normal random variable. So, well anyway, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.